everyone. So today we're continuing with the subject uh, biodiversity here at Waterkloof because Waterkloof is very proud to say that we have biodiversity championship status. So for the format for today is we're chatting with Jana Kluru who amongst a lot of jobs also oversees our bioreactor and then we're going to be going with Christian into the bush a little bit and looking at some of the indigenous plantation and of course we have to taste wine so we'll taste the Revenant Chenin Blanc 2019 as well as the False Bay Pinotage. So water is such an essential part of the biodiversity concept to make sure that we're not dumping any effluent water into the municipal um, system. We have our own water treatment plantation here at Waterkloof. So Yannick um, will tell us how the different stages of the treatment works and what we do with the water in the end. So stage number one, Yannick, yeah. what's happening? Right, here we have our, our aerator. Um, it's a reservoir that we, we actually use to aerate the effluent and the, uh, how, do you, how shall we call it, effluent waste, everything that we collect from the, from the winery and the restaurant. It all goes into a couple of sumps and then that includes our, our sewage and then that gets pumped into our aerator here. Um, so basically what it is, is it's a system where you have a pipe at the bottom of the reservoir that actually emits fine little bubbles and these bubbles actually put some oxygen into this effluent mix, if yeah. you want to call it that. Um, the reason why we do it is so that it actually it adds oxygen to the mix and then that breaks up any of the uh, how shall we say um, odor odors you know. that you could get or or any other harmful gases it actually just breaks that up and it also goes some way in, in breaking up some of the metals that you would find mm -hmm. in a normal environment yeah. but there's microbes in here exactly that needs the oxygen exactly and, the, and then they oh. basically feed on the sludge yes. and that's why we can stand here without having to wear masks because yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. it, it doesn't <laughs> smell. smell and it's, yeah. a, it's a natural environment um, we, we it, it does its own job so we just have to keep our, our finger on it to make sure that um, it works and it switches on when it has to and it switches off when it has to because you can actually yeah. get a point where you over aerate mm -hmm. and then that's that's quite harmful to the system and then you, you get problems. So it's on a timer system. Exactly. How long does it aerate and how long so it settles as well? Right? Yeah it settles so so it depends on the time of the year obviously now in winter when we are quiet we switch it off at six o'clock because at six o'clock nothing else goes on on the farm and then the, the, the we call it yeah it would actually start settling solids, um, yeah. yeah the solids yeah. there we go that, that would settle and you have a clear liquid layer on top and then the next morning about six o'clock that we have an emptying pump that would switch on and then that takes it all up to our um, reed bed and our sand bed but it first goes into the sand bed where it then filters through a layer of Macasa sand, console sand, and then oh, wow. a couple of yeah, a couple of layers of bitum just to to make sure we don't chuck any of the solids into the into the reed bed. And then then it allows there with the wind and the and the lovely sun we get up here, it dries the um, the solids out, and you get a very nice uh, how shall we? It's like a it's like a chip form yeah. you get a dry yeah. dry very dry kind of like material that you can then crush and work back into our it's rich compost. Nitrogen. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, let's go look at stage two sure. and three. <laughs> so we're standing here now by the um, sand bed. So we, we're well, pretty much going from the bioreactor now to the sand bed. So can you just quickly recap what's happening here? Yeah, so basically what we're doing now is we're decanting into the sand bed. Um, there are two versions of decanting. We can either decant the clear water, they've died earlier that you get in the morning or we decant sludge and that's what's happening here right now okay. it's some of the sludge that we're putting in the in the sand bed and that we do for drying purposes so you would then after a couple of weeks depending on the season you would get a very nice crispy sludge the whole the whole bed starts basically cracking up and you have what you left with this like a chip a crisp and that's quite great for crushing and that we use in our compost again. 
uh, it's rich in nitrogen, as as um, Nadia said, and it's just a it's it's, it's quite a, a a cool thing to imagine that everything that you've done in the cellar, whatever you've done in the cellar, yeah. comes back into the farm. Nothing goes to waste. The water actually gets seeped, seeps through the sand bed, goes into our reed bed, and from there it's decanted down to our, our irrigation dam. Yeah. Um, so everything literally gets reused. And once again, this doesn't smell at all. No. But there's no funny. No, there's, aroma there's coming absolutely through, nothing. nothing. And, and we always say when you know it's working, it actually starts smelling like the ocean. So it's a very fresh, natural smell that you Saline. get from up here. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, and then we'll, we'll move across to the reed bed just now. Um, in there with a, a quite a healthy ecosystem going. There are frogs in there. We're getting some um, little fish now that oh, will, yeah, that will eat the mosquito larvae. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it works. Okay, so last step, Yannick, the reed bed. Yes, the reed bed. Um, this is actually my favorite part of the system. Just purely because it's the first place I come to normally when I arrive at work in the morning. Everything is quiet, you hear the frogs, which means your system is healthy. Um, and, it's, uh, and that's the last part of the process where you, you know when the, the water is clear and you have the frogs in there, it's healthy, mm. the water is good, you can actually reuse it. Um, so, so how does it work? Yeah, so basically you would have the water that you get from after filtering through the sand bed, mm -hmm. it will travel down into the into the reed bed, and then there's a snaking effect okay. that you get, and you have um, quite a lot of, of, of reeds in here that have a very healthy big um, mm. root system, and that also helps filtering through mm. the effluent because it is actually still effluent, mm -hmm. but it sits in here for at least a week before we start decanting it down to the Okay. to the irrigation dam to give it as much time as possible to get treated and it's treated naturally so and you do you analyze the water indeed we do um that's Are you happy with that yeah, well yes mm -hmm. we can see an improvement um mm -hmm. we're still not where we want to be mm -hmm. but um there's always room for improvement and that's kind of where we're going at the moment mm -hmm. and but your ph is quite good yes. you're at about yes. seven and yes. yeah yeah it's, it's it's good you can see because we obviously analyze what goes into the aerator, mm. um, that's raw, and then we analyze what you get your end product, um, and there's a marked difference between the two. So um, it's interesting that you get to change the quality of your effluent without putting any chemicals in, yeah. nothing. It's just you're putting in uh, good oxygen supply, and then microbes. you have a, a microbes mm. that, that live there naturally, mm. and, then, and then a couple of systems. And, and yeah of the process. Oh, it's great eh? and it's, it's nice to be a part of a project where we're not dumping anything into exactly. the system and everything is staying at water exactly. and especially with the drought conditions yes. that we're seeing to rather reuse the water. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah we use our, our treated um, clear water at the end of the day we even water some of uh, the lawns on the estate mm -hmm. and the helipad we try and keep green Yes. so yeah. we do reuse it all mm -hmm. the time. Excellent. Well, thanks for that. Thank you. And uh, I hope other people will try and implement this at their homes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Let's see. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> so a big part of our biodiversity championship status is looking after the indigenous plantation. And not that Christian has not enough work that also forms part of his job. So what have you been um, doing lately to yeah. attain that status? Yeah. So, uh, um, for us to plant vineyards and to farm vineyards, uh, we have to have 50% of the farm natural vegetation. Mm -hmm. uh, so we created a voluntary we, as a voluntary conservation site. Yes. 50% of the farm is then natural vegetation, fine eh? boss. Yeah. 50%. And uh, although parts of the farm is granitic fine boss, mm -hmm. we do have some rare species of Renoster felt um, mm -hmm. on the farm that um, needs to be protected because it is um, endangered. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, we uh, we basically burnt the felt in 2009. Mm -hmm. Counted 111 species of different fine boss that came back, yes, and uh, that was only in one season. So different seasons, mm. um, even more different species will come up. There's mm. even orchids sometimes of the year. Up yes. Here. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I mean, there's there's more diversity, 
mm-hmm. on the Scarpenberg or in yes. the Western Cape than in the whole Northern Hemisphere. So it, it's Incredible, really worth, eh? worth protecting. Mm. Um, but from a viticultural point of view, uh, we release natural predators mm. in the vineyards that control mealybug. Mm-hmm. Um, and those natural predators breed in the Feinbos areas in winter. Okay. And then when the, when the vines uh, start to bud, mm-hmm. um, and that is when usually your, 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 um, your uh, mealybug will get... Pesky mealybugs, yeah. yeah. They get active, mm. then the predators move to the vineyard. Mm. Yeah, so... Uh, so it's a nice uh, system, yeah, ecosystem very nice working system, together. Yeah. And just for our European viewers, what does Feinbos actually translate to? Yeah. <laughs> so when the, when the it, well, these type of vegetation, if you look, it's not very um, woody. It is actually quite very fine, but that's mm. not where the name come, came from. Mm. The name came from when the Dutch came here and they wanted to graze. Uh, mm. There isn't a lot of carrying capacity on, on, on the felt, mm. so it's not a, it doesn't have a lot of um, fodder value. Mm-hmm. So they the said, animals, yeah. yeah. So the Dutch said, well, the area is quite fine. It's fine. It's oh, okay. Yeah, so, you yeah, can't uh, really graze a lot of animals up yes. here. So. Oh, is that yeah. the definition? And that's all also where the Afrikaans word fijn gesai komt from. Okay, yeah. interesting. Yeah, so the fodder value is very little. Yes. Yeah. And now you're going to go show us um, some of your predators. Yeah, I'm going to show you. Great, yeah. that's my favorite part. <laughs> okay, so now we're standing here and Christian's got his predators. So what do you have there? Yeah, um, so this, uh, these insects come from a, a company called Field Bugs. Field uh, yeah, and yeah. it's distributed by uh, Bram Jonker in the Western Cape. Mm-hmm. And, uh, You're getting commission from Bram Jonker. <laughs> 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 no, well, I think uh, it's been working so well, but as it's worth mentioning, oh, his yes. name. And we have sure. been using them now for about mm. six years. Mm. We went from uh, 900 millibuck males per hectare, which we caught in pheromone traps, mm. down to 20 to 30. Yes, that's and, good. Um, uh, you would know in the cellar we don't have any millibuck coming in. Maybe some yes. ants every now and then, but mm. no millibuck. And that is from, from being uh, with this company now for about six, six years. years, just mm. releasing natural predators in the vineyards. Um, keeping our soil alive so it's always life in the soil mm. um, and yeah so what we'll do is we'll start off the season because the millibug would be very small mm-hmm. we'll start off with a little wasps these yes. wasps are like a millimeter uh, mm-hmm. big and they'll go into the little bark and the hooks and the crannies of the vines looking for millibug oh, okay. and uh, whatever populations they've missed mm-hmm. uh, would grow bigger mm-hmm. and then we release uh, these beetles Okay. That looks just like a, a, a ladybug. Uh, yeah. It's just black in color. Yes. And it's very easy how, uh, how you use them. It's about a thousand eggs per mm-hmm. um, tube like this. Yes. And you just pull off the little label. Mm-hmm. And uh, you'll do about three of these per hectare or so. That's fantastic. Um, yeah. And uh, the cost is about a thousand rand per mm-hmm. hectare for the whole season. So it's really cost Good. effective. Uh, they'll take about uh, a week to breed out mm-hmm. and scour your vineyards looking for, mm-hmm. for any millibugs. Oh, fantastic. So, yeah. And now, because you have less, you're putting less of these in? Yeah, so, so mm-hmm. when we started, we started with a red program, mm-hmm. which after three years went down to an orange program, and mm-hmm. now we're running this whole farm on a green program. So oh, it's, it's really cheap now for us. Mm-hmm. And also the, the predators uh, breed in the Feinbos areas, mm-hmm. um, and we do find the eggs in the Feinbos. So the whole Incredible system has come eh? together very yeah. nicely, but it all started with mm. getting the weeds to go in the vineyards, getting the bacteria and the funguses to go, keeping the soil alive, mm. which just by that process, yeah. our millibug populations went down yes. because the females then stay in the soil. There's no need for her to populate the vineyards. I had to go and eat the leaves because she's got food at There's the bottom. There's enough of a mm. area mm. for that to live oh, in, that's so. And other insect problems, do you, how do you control yeah. them? So any other insects with, 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 that we've got a problem with is vine weevils. Mm. And uh, we spray uh, Bacillus bassiana, which is a predator mm. nematode. Okay. Uh, so it's also a, a living uh, predator mm. that we spray on the soil in winter and they go and look for the grubs yes. of the insect and uh, kill them that way. Okay, yeah. so the one insect's eating the other insect. Absolutely, yeah. Great. And we, we don't decimate any populations, we mm. just restoring the balance mm. and trying to fit into this perfect system mm. uh, by farming something like vineyards which yes. yeah yeah it's yeah. fascinating it's definitely the best way to work yeah. Yeah. okay so Christian I forged you our Revenant Chenin Blanc 
um, and as you can see it's an integrated label of a phoenix rising from the ashes with a vineyard so the concept is it links in so nicely with the way that you're farming that you're you know not spraying any chemicals you're going and you're putting your insects back and um, this is a tw the 2019 vintage so it's all um, Bushfind Chenin Blanc and the way we make it is that we whole bunch press the Chenin Blanc there's a little bit of Sauvignon in it as well uh, both whole bunch pressed fermented separately predominantly barrel fermented a bit of concrete eggs a bit of stainless steel and then um, naturally fermented so also a traditional way of making wine and then we left this actually on the lees for about 15 months eh? and then only um, did a basic cold stabilization and uh, put it to bottles so it's very well structured the Shannon um, and it's got that beautiful sort of Stellenbosch cooler climate stone fruit character coming through um, and it's it's a nice easy drinking style but you can still have this with um, I mean in the winter can have it with something like scallops as well with a nice butter sauce or something would work quite good mm. Tasty. yeah <laughs> so now we're standing here just behind the building just in line with the uh, bioreactor and uh, some of the water you use for the bioreactor from the bioreactor gets used to uh, yeah, water the helipad where we're standing now overlooking the false bay yeah, so in our glass is the False Bay Pinotage 2018. So False Bay um, is a range that Paul started when he first came to South Africa in 1994. We started doing it naturally, so no added yeast back in 1994, which was probably unheard of. Um, and now we're still continuing with that tradition. So this is all bush vines. I love going to this uh, vineyard because you can see Table Mountain from there and um, it's just a nice drive. It's very old school farming practices as well. And it's all picked by hand, sorted in the vineyard, naturally fermented and aged in our wooden fermenters. Um, we leave it in the wooden fermenters for just over a year and then give it a basic filtration and put it to bottle. So I. Well, the style that we enjoy here at Bartica is more a sort of lifted style of pinotage, so not excessively ripe, very soft on the tannins. We don't add any of that funky powdery tannins or oak chips or anything. Yeah. It's just good fruit and we keep it simple. So that's a false bay pinotage. Yeah. Mm.